Welcome, welcome everyone to a casted game of Age of Empires 4. And today, spawning in the southeast corner of the map, we've got 3DB playing in orange as the Zhushi's Legacy. And his opponent in the northwest playing in teal, we've got 3D Garnath playing as the Jonda Arc faction. Welcome, welcome everyone to Hidden Valley. That is the map for today, featuring two civilizations of the New Sultan's Ascent DLC for Age of Empires 4 on the map Hidden Valley, which is also a new map. For this DLC, we've got the sacred sites in the middle, two massive wood lines separating the two players. You kind of have to break through, uh, usually to get through within the sort of 25 minute mark. Usually, I mean, it depends how quickly you chop through, right? In any case, two civilizations that we've come to know and love. Obviously, two sub factions, Jean de Arc branching off from the French, and Jushi's Legacy branching off from the Chinese. Of course, they have very subtle differences. Actually, in many ways, they're actually quite significant differences. For example, the Tang Dynasty for 3DB and Jushi's Legacy will give the cheaper tech up to the next age, as you will be able to see. It's a, a significant discount there. 340 food, 170 gold. And when you compare, for example, Jean d'Arc, I mean, a lot of things are very similar between the Jean d'Arc faction and the French. The big thing that's really different is the fact that you get a hero unit, Jean d'Arc herself. She starts life off as a lowly peasant. And uh, where is she off to? I'm not sure where she is. She usually does have a bit of a crown on top of her head. There she is. She's uh, she's mining gold like her comrade there. But she will have some advantages as the game wears on. She can level up. She can become a woman at arms. She can even become a hunter. But we'll see. Of course, many other bonuses. that She does build faster. 33% faster, in fact. And when she does get to level 2, she'll be able to pass on those building secrets to her comrades. Oh, wait, what? This villager coming in for 3db. Randomly here in the north. Okay, maybe trying to for a proxy base. It's not something you'll commonly see. Now what's interesting, you're kind of expecting this dynamic of this civilization matchup for the Jean d'Arc faction to be aggressive and Jushi's legacy to be pretty passive in terms of, you know, military-wise. But you'd expect them to be quite aggressive in terms of booming. Probably expecting multiple town centers. That's how it's supposed to go. But when you factor in, we're watching 3DB and 3D Garnath. Well, the 3D boys, they don't tend to do things necessarily by the meta. They tend to switch things up a little bit. I mean, we already do see that village coming out north, right? So that, that gives you an indication that this isn't going to be a normal game. And uh, it's kind of one of the reasons why I love to watch 3DB play Age of Empires 4, because you expect kind of crazy stuff like that. 3D Garnath, he's actually going to send a villager as well. Maybe to try and chase this down. He's probably a bit paranoid that B might be sending a scout, which he actually is. Of course, you don't want to be caught out. You know, with a scout and a villager with just your own scout. He really wants to snipe this villager, but I'm not sure if he'll get it in the end, because 3DB should be able to push this away as long as he body blocks. That's exactly what he does. Oh, the scout actually rallied... Oh, I think they attack moved there for a second. That's what caused them to go for the scout rather than the villager. Maybe a bit of a missed opportunity there for Garnath. Now, what I would say, that's a lot of idle time caused by B, but it's somehow... Not as bad as it could have been, because Garnath did send his own villager. In any case, it's going to be the School of Cavalry. Jeanne d'Arc will be building that herself, taking advantage of that 33% building speed. And, well, B is going to go up with the Meditation Gardens. That's going to give a bit of passive income. It's going to be covering the gold, food, and stone. And a little bit of wood as well. Possibly, I mean... I. Often you'd think it's going to be a second town center for Jushi's Legacy, Song Dynasty, your typical kind of opening. But, I mean, they do have some aggressiveness built into them as well. Like, you know, getting the, the, the Zhugnu and also the early palace guards could be an option. And uh, I, we, I'm leaning towards thinking that might be the play here. And what's really interesting is actually Jean d'Arc. She is going to be going with the second town center, which is, I mean, it's not unheard of. You know, the French did have this phase of going for second town centers quite frequently. And uh, pretty recently as well. So I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's not too much of a surprise to see this happen. But one thing that is different between the Jean d'Arc faction and the regular French one is that the town centre actually does take your regular 20 seconds to train a villager, whereas the French, yeah, it only takes 18 seconds for them. So it's less of an economy bonus there for Jean d'Arc, but of course she does have her own benefits. We'll be able to consecrate buildings like production buildings, even the town centre, in fact, making the food cost cheaper as she does level up. Question is, what does Garneth go for? Does she go for the hunter line to give her an archer kind of based attack? And in fact, he's gone for woman at arms, so she's gonna have a melee attack, which is quite useful against Chukanu, which could be an option. Hello, hello, what's going on here? 
B, going up with the Zhongnang Tower. Going to be getting the Dynasty there, the Song Dynasty, which will give her a cheaper cost attributed to her, or the non-production buildings. But uh, what's really interesting about this, you might be thinking, why would you build this landmark? And that's a probably a valid question. I don't think we've ever seen this before, but I, I have some thoughts. Like, it makes sense that what B is going to do is going to build forward production buildings, going to get a proxy base. And what this will allow this to happen is Zhongnang Tower will actually spawn free units, which is kind of bonkers in a way, because whilst you will have to pay the full price for the production buildings, you will get a free unit once it's built. Uh, there is a question in chat. Does the hero unit, Jean d'Arc, come back like the Mongol Khan? She does. She does come back on a time, but there is an ability to actually pay a penalty or pay, yeah, I guess you could call it a penalty to get her spawning instantly. It's about, uh, I think when as she levels up, I think it gets more expensive. So it's 250 gold at the moment, but it will it will go up as time goes on if she does get leveled up. So I think the next stage is uh, 500. So it can get a hefty cost, but obviously you save the time. Now she does have an incredible attack against beasts like the Hunt of a Boar. That's a plus 10 against huntable animals, so she's going to chop through that bee ball all by herself. Maybe get bitten a bit, too. In the process, interesting enough, B is actually going to wall up, which kind of makes sense because he's probably paranoid about seeing some royal knights. And it looks like he's being quite aggressive, so he's not going to have any military there. Comes out with the first barracks and probably should be getting a free unit spawned here, as we can see the spearman pops out. And does have access to the early palace guards if he so chooses. Going to be opening up with a spearman first and then getting the upgrades to the hardened version. Going to go for a stable as well. Would get free horsemen out of that. Certainly an interesting way to play the Jushi's Legacy. I, we definitely haven't seen this before. And uh, although I'm surprised, I guess I probably shouldn't be because it is 3DB, right? Interesting enough, not actually finishing off those palisade walls. Wouldn't have actually cost that much more just to finish that off. But does have an outpost, of course. That is certainly helpful. Going to be trying to burn through the palisades there on the north. Starting off with the scout, adding in the horsemen. Now, with Garneth going for that second town center on the gold vein, it does make things a bit tricky. It makes things a little bit more predict unpredictable in this match because you'd expect it to be the other way around, right? It's very common that we see Jushi's legacy being defensive with the second town center and Sean Dark being aggressive. We can just see that consecrate ability on that town center, by the way. So instead of a villager costing 50 food, it's actually only going to cost 37. And that's actually going to be helping the villager boom quite a bit. Of course, food is uh, very precious for this faction to be able to afford those royal knights and those villagers. Starting to make his way through those. It's starting to get a bit tricky here for, for Garnath because there's a lot of production buildings. That means a lot of free units. A couple of Chukunu doesn't yet have steeled arrow. That's probably going to be on the priority list. Once he does get a, a blacksmith, of course. But it looks like at the moment he's just going to be pumping out the production buildings. He wants those free units, right? I mean, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, if you ever think of... I mean, to be fair, though. Like, a horseman does cost 120 resources. He's spending an extra 30 resources for the free unit. And also a production building. But uh, he's not going to be able to sustain the production out of all of this, I don't think. Not for the short term, anyway. Maybe to give it another 5-10 minutes when the village accounts do start to rise. Maybe it's a possibility. In any case, he's actually going to start to burn through. Obviously, there's no way for Garnet to really hold that significantly. But he does have the town centre. It's going to get a static defence in the form of an outpost on that short wood line. So it should be protected for now. But B is going to look to pile on pressure. Only 9 minutes on the clock and he's already got 17 military units. Maybe looking to dive that in before the outpost is built. And he is going to, he's going to dive. It didn't quite commit enough villages there, Garnet. To get it up quick enough. Bit of miscalculation. But he did get a, a couple of short walls here. Just to funnel up that army into the second town center. He's going to get another production building right on the edge of that. I don't think B is going to be happy until that production building is right just outside the range of the town centers. He's got to be careful. He's, he is eating arrows from his town from the enemy's town center. But I'm pretty excited to see how this one pans out. Like, if B wins this, could he be onto something in terms of strategy? It's very risky, obviously. He saw a village in the north getting scouted out. Another production building. I mean, at this point, I don't think he can maintain production out of all of this. So I'm pretty surprised to see him spend so much because even a Chukunu, which comes for free, I mean, that's a good 
80 resources. I mean, he's spending 150, though, to get the production building. So I'm not sure how this works out for B. Of course, as he does scale up the economy, he's going to produce out of most of these things. To be fair, he's not doing a two-shotty job. I mean, the horseman is going to be very difficult to produce in mass numbers from this number of stables, right? Because of the fact they do cost 120 resources. But he does have Imperial officials. That will help him on his way. Speaking about helping him on his way, he does have 500 gold in the bank. I wonder if he's going to be getting upgrades. He is getting steel Arrow. I would love to see an Iron, iron Undermesh come in as well because he's kind of diving underneath town centers. He's probably going to need... Oh, he's already got Iron Undermesh, to be fair. He might need to fit the leatherwork with what's happening here. But Jean d'Arc getting involved in the fight. And if she does, that could be a problem situation for, for B. I don't think he quite has enough. Like, the Chukunu are good, but they're not that good to deal with the Knights. Although he doesn't have Iron Undermesh yet, Garnath. He does have a couple of Spearmen, but... The good thing for Jean d'Arc, she's getting experience, but she might die here. She does. She's pretty weak at this stage, I have to say. Especially when there is no Iron Undermesh there for Garnath. Going to dive in with the, the knights. The horseman going to try and act as a meat shield to just to try and protect those Chukunu. It's certainly the right move. Does uh, look a bit dicey here for Garnath, but you know, with the villager lead that he's got now, 49 to 38, you know, all he really needs to do is buy time, right? That's really what he's got to do to allow this villager lead to start to scale into economy and in, then into military. You can see here, look at this. Production buildings are consecrated. So whilst the French Royal Knights are pretty expensive, you know, the cost reduction is... It's pretty nice. Only 105 food. Now, there is actually an ability or an upgrade, I should say, to be able to uh, cause the consecrate ability to reduce the cost for wood and gold as well. That'll come later on on the line. question is whether we even get to that stage of the game where it's possible to get that, because it uh, looks like B is going to continue that aggression. He's got 300 wood in the bank. I wonder if he's going to get a ram. Does he have a... Where's his blacksmith? There it is. Oh, he's already got Siege Engineering. I was kind of anticipating that, maybe. He's already got two Rams. Okay, he's going to get a third as well. Going to get an outpost to protect this area. This is actually pretty dicey for Garnath. He's going to have to really scale in numbers. Now, he's going mostly for, for Knights, it seems. Knights and Archers, which is the typical kind of unit composition that you go for Jean d'Arc and the French. I like, but he's got to be careful that he takes a fight at the right time. Too early, and it will be game over. Too late. And it will be game over. He's going to dive in now. He feels like he might try and protect that second town center. I'm not sure if it will happen or not. Nice to dive in. It does use the Holy Wrath ability with a woman at arms. Jean d'Arc trying to get close. But she does get sniped again. And well, Garnath is going to have to pay a heavy penalty to get her spawning up again. A couple of spearmen. They are chasing on down the knights. And if the spearmen numbers do stay alive, they'll keep those knights away. It looks like the archers coming from Jean d'Arc. Looking to just snipe them as best as she can. They're doing a pretty good job of it. But with Iron Undermesh, those knights are pretty tanky. He's also going to get hand cannon splits in this fortified outpost, or what's soon to be a fortified outpost, on the front for B, just to protect that production. Losing the blacksmith, Garneth is in all sorts of trouble. He's lost the second town center as well. He's going to need a massive pusher back. Now, the good thing for Garneth is whilst he's losing infrastructure, he does still have more villagers. So if he can continue the pumping out of resources and then into units, now he might not be too bad as... You know, he might not be too far off pushing this back. He didn't lose too many units on that fight. And I think that's the key bit of detail, right? He kind of poked and prodded. He still bought a little bit of time, but I don't know if he's bought enough. Because that's a lot of rams. Five rams coming up for B. But he's got to be careful, though. I feel like five is enough. Probably does need to continue to pump out units. Because if he's going to lose this game, it's because he doesn't have enough units. He does have a lot of Chukunu. Not enough to two-shot the knights just yet. Going to have to head back. Now, the good thing is the rams are kind of body blocking in some ways. Holy smokes, okay, well. He's not got enough gold to buy Jean d'Arc again. and He's going to try and cut this as best as he can. Sniping the horsemen first, but those knights are pretty tanky. There's no spearmen here, of course. The ram's going to try and take out the town center, but there are villagers burning this down. I feel like he should bring these rams back, right? Because, I mean, to be fair, he's keeping the villagers idled. But he's going to lose the rams pretty quickly. And he's looking to take out all those knights. There's still one remaining. And then that leaves quite a decent number of archers. I'm not sure B has enough here. He does have the outpost fortified, though, so it will be taking time for Garnath to push us back fully because he will need siege engineering, which he did lose his blacksmith. I'm not sure if he got it up in time, that tech. I probably wouldn't have. He does have a lot of wood to maybe get a ram if he did. He's going to focus on those Chukunu for now. does have a couple of horsemen riding in. That's actually going to be a, a big deal breaker in this game, in this match, because 
They soaked up a lot of arrow fire, although the archers now do have to back away. He's fighting underneath two out outposts at the end of the day with hand cannon slits. And so he does have to retreat. He did stop that ram rush temporarily because two rams that remain. They're going to be pushing forward again on those production buildings. Trying to get some more production buildings up, but that might go down before it's even built. Looks like might be the case. No, the rams are being pulled back now this time. Those villagers popping forward. Should be able to snipe one of the rams. No, just about gets away there. 3DB needs to protect it if he can. It still has the villager lead overall, which is kind of crazy. Oh, this is actually a really nice spot of economy here for Garnath. It's really unfortunate for B. He didn't spot this. And there's, there's boar and gold, which is exactly what he needs for night production, right? He's going to get another ram or two. I mean, this is not over for Ghana, not by any means, because it just takes one good fight and it becomes a very big pushback. On the east side, equally though, B is getting the pocket economy, is getting the deer camp up in the northeast. Oh, this could be a big, big haul here for B. Spotting this out is really crucial. He's going to kill a lot of villagers. Wait, hello? B. Okay, spots it now and... I mean, to be fair, there aren't that many Chukunus, so that some of the villagers might just about to be able to escape. I'm not so sure. It's definitely going to be tricky. It does have wheelbarrow. We'll keep up with that in a second, because there's a big fight on the front lines. There are a couple of knights trying to take out the ram. They will. The good thing is, is that, well, for B at least, it's uh, distracting those knights, right? It's, it's making them focus on the ram, and it means that the Chukunu are getting some damage. Jean d'Arc Jean does come back out again. And this time coming out back as a knight. Knight numbers are starting to dwindle though. Does take a, a, quite a few of the Chukunus on the way though. The villagers actually get out of there. The movement speed 1.12 versus 1.29. They do manage to escape in the end. But what Garneth hasn't escaped just yet is the pressure because it's still continuing. But I've got to say this bit of pocket economies here and this is just great for Garneth honestly. It's helped him out so much. 14. Is that 11? No, it's 11 villagers. That's a, a big proportion of that economy. About fifth. Holy Wrath ability does come out with the knights. Takes out a lot of damage on those Jukunu. She's going to ride in with two comrades in terms of knights. The archer's going to follow up behind that. But having to fight underneath the tower, which is not ideal. Jean d'Arc did soak up a lot of arrow fire. A couple more Jukunu do pop out from the archer rangers. But I'm not sure that's enough because there we are. We do see Jean's champions heading out onto the field with 175 HP dealing 14 melee damage. They're going to be taking out a lot of those Chukunus on the retreat. Starting to build up again. Oh, throwing away a couple of archers there. They didn't get the Momo with the fight. Didn't group together. Knights are charging in once again. And a couple of spearmen popping out for B as well. So I'm not so sure about this fight for Garner. He's going to take it anyway. I think with the Jean's champions, he might be able to do just okay. But he's fighting underneath two at towers with, that, with, um, with hand cannon slits. It's not really what he would want to do, ideally, in ideal circumstances. Jean d'Arc is healing herself up just as well, because she's pretty low on health. He's getting involved in the fight now, but she might get sniped. She does use the Holy Wrath ability while she can. But it looks like B should be able to hold in this position. Back from the southwest. A farming transition in a pretty hidden area, or pretty much in open sight, but it's something that B probably wouldn't find out without scouting, of course, and Hang on a minute. Garneth is losing a lot of units. I think the hand cannon slits and towers have done a great job for B, especially with the, the fortification, right? Because he can't just torch that down with melee units. He's going to have to invest in siege in the form of rams. At this moment, he doesn't have the village count. And for the first time in the game, I think, B has actually started to pull ahead in the villager department. Villager numbers, at least. 60 to 54. Where do you go from here for your Garneth? Getting the upgrades now, double broadaxe and the pickaxe. Better late than never. Oh, that's a lot of Chukunu, but it's not like an overwhelming get out of my game mass of Chukunu. He's going to kill a couple of villagers on the woodline, maybe? No, it doesn't get one. Has to redirect. But a crazy game on Hidden Valley. Where do you go from Garneth? If you're Garneth, he's, he's trying to farm away. I mean, the big problem is, is getting that food economy. He does have the boar in the south. He's farming away elsewhere. It's kind of lacking space back at home, right? This is kind of a missed opportunity. Garneth is keeping himself secret of that economy, and B is just not spotting it. 
Which is, uh, if he did spot it, it would be game over, you know? That's kind of crazy when you think about it. All the villagers on the woodline do have to back away. Bees diving in a little bit. I'm not so sure about this. There's actually a decent number of army here for Garnath now. Especially with the knight numbers. If he can sp snipe out the spearmen, then this faction, Jean d'Arc, would be doing okay. But behind this, B is going to go up with the Shaolin Monastery. So ladies and gents, we're going to be seeing some Shaolin monks. Got a good farming economy established itself at least a little bit. Now we will be getting some Shaolin monks on the field. They'll be able to pick up the relics, but also attack and fight, add to the fight. But he's going to dive in here a little bit. Jean's champions do pop out and they're going to be looking to snipe out as many of those Chukunu. That Holy Wrath ability took out so many of those Chukunu in the end. So many dead bodies. And that was a great use of that ability. She's going to continue to ride in another Holy Wrath ability. The trouble is, the Chukunu are so clumped together, the Holy Wrath ability does so much damage. The Knight's going to charge in once again and, and get good numbers. There's no Spearman here on hand for B. It almost feels like he's losing this, this position. And certainly in terms of military numbers. I think that tech up to the Castle Age was maybe a little bit mistimed. Like, it, it, it does mean he's going to lose his position, right? There's a lot of wood investment in these production buildings. Divine Restoration comes in to heal the units. Making things go from bad to worse for B. And I think we've got to see some rams for Garnath and just push this back and he should be okay. Speaking of which, there is that battering ram. And where does B go from this? He's going to be walling up on the east side. He's going to look to play a bit more of the macro game. Which is kind of awkward because he's probably expecting that he, you know, he's probably expecting to have won the game by now. Heading into almost the 22nd minute of the game. It will allow B though, being in the castle age, to get some of those relics. I'm not sure if he's actually got any of the the monks out yet which is a bit of a shame costing 200 food they're not cheap he does queue up the first one now yo fits bro thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for the raid i appreciate it guys if you're watching on youtube later on i mean to be fair you guys know fits bro right you guys know fits bro but anyway a shout out nonetheless so if you guys know i'm starting to stream on twitch a little bit more so that hence the raid but make sure you do check out fits bro he's got some good guides and some good casted games basically anything related to age of empires 4 he's got he's got it so make sure you do check him out. He, he's casting a lot. He's uh, streaming a lot on Twitch as well. So do check that out. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. But we've got a crazy game with 3DB versus Garnath. And, okay, eventually now Garnath is actually going to take this out. I mean, let me know actually guys in the comments section below, especially on YouTube and on Twitch. Did you really expect this to happen? Like I thought Garnath was down and out, but he's managed to hold back. There was always an opportunity. He did have the villager lead for quite some time, but he did lose a lot of military and somehow has clawed his way back. And I think it really comes down to the fact that the B went to the castle age, right? That is a lot of resources. 1,200 food, 600 gold, 1,800 resources in total. That's a lot of resources to pump out into a tech up, which at this point hasn't really got him all that much. He's got none of the relics yet, but he does have a couple of these lances. So this is going to do some good work, but they're not going to stand up against this number of knights, even feudal age knights. We know how the French do in the feudal age. They are very feudal age heavy. And they even fare up against Castle Age enemy, enemies like this at times. Depends on the numbers, of course. But with this number of numbers of knights, like, B is going to need a large army to really pose any sort of problem. And B's playing a very... Consent I mean, he's really paranoid. Is he going to need double palisade layers on the west side? Double palisade layers on the east side. Maybe he's looking to boom ahead and maybe get a second town centre, maybe. Does have 70 villages, so maybe he does have that second town centre. Let's just have a quick look-see. Not yet. He's just killed a lot of enemy villagers, right? He's killed 34 so far. Jean d'Arc does use the Holy Restoration ability. Going to try and chase down the two lances. Be coming in from the east side as well with a couple of Chukunu. Veteran Chukunu at that. Going to snap a villager. Now, this is looking a bit dicey for B. Like, we get into this stage of the game where things have kind of reversed, right? Like, Garneth was kind of turtling up with two town centers and is being pushed. He held off that push massively well. Although it looked a bit ropey at times, I've got to say. But now it's B's time to turtle, right? He does have the villager lead as well now. And it's kind of a role reversal. He's going to have to defend, but he doesn't really have much of a standing army. And the good thing for B is that he does have a castle age tech up. So the army that he does have will just be pound for pound better. The trouble is he might not have enough pounds. There's just too many knights here for the for Jean d'Arc. And herself is a bit of a beefcake. Take a look at that. 450 HP. 21 sword melee damage. She is no joke. And all of a sudden, the economy is nicely spread out for, for Garnath. So even if B wants to attack, where does he go? He has to go for several different locations. Oh, this monk is going to... Uh, the Shaolin monk is going to get some good value. Sending a lancer here. So these are quite a few dead villagers there with Garnath. 
Now, the crazy thing is, is that if B does hold, he should win the game. The trouble is, that's a big if. Garnath has a massive timing window here. And it's a pretty big timing window, I've got to say, because he's got 46 military versus 8. If he pushes within the next, I'd say, 10, 12 minutes, there's a good chance he wins the game. Because B's army is just, it's just non-existent. He's going to get completely overwhelmed. Palisade Wars is not going to help him. It's going to take a couple of seconds for that to be burned through by this number of melee units. The trouble for Garnath is he is starting to lose a couple of bits of economy, right? And so that timer is going to speed up a little bit because B eventually will start to be able to produce that Castle Age army, especially if he supervises the production buildings. That's always an option for Jushi's legacy and the Chinese alike. If they can start to produce quickly by supervising those buildings, translate that economy that he does have into military, he should be okay. It's a very hard farming transition, which was necessary, taking out a lot of the, the deer camps and the, and the boar as well, I think, in the north. But that farming transition does need some time again to kick in. It's a lot of wood investment that went into that, of which he has only nine villages on wood, and he's really struggling. He's got a lot of food, actually. Wait, wait. Is he actually thinking about an Imperial Age? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Because B is floating a heck of a lot of food. Uh, I'm not so sure about this. This feels really greedy by B. There's a couple of Jean's champions as well. He's got five of them. So she actually went up with the tech up in terms of getting five of the champions rather than three and a Bombard. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like Bombard is just too good of an option to miss out. But well, Garnath chose what he chose. And yeah, the rounds can take care of this uh, forward production. It was a kind... It wasn't necessarily a full all-in, but... It was a pretty heavy all-in. Gonna try and get a keep. It's gonna go for the Imperial. This is super, super greedy. And is it really necessary? Because he's got the tech up, right? He's got the Castle Age tech up. He could have gone for a lot of knights. Or lancers, I should say. And full lancers probably could have won against this. Because the archers kind of tickled him, right? Uh, but we'll see. Because I don't know if B can hold out here. Because there's a keep going up. But I'm not sure if it goes up in time. Shaolin Monk's gonna try and get a Wallow. Just to push this back, right? He just needs to push it back as much as he can. And the archers can range. The knights do have to back away. Another Wallow. Trying to buy time for the keep to go up. The keep go will go up, but again, there's not going to be boiling oil here. The knights might just dive underneath this with the champion. Jean, in the meantime, is getting a lot of XP. Relics are being deposited again. Holy hand cannon slits. Divine restoration comes out to heal up all those units. 61 military versus 15. B is under all sorts of trouble. We talked about this timing push, and it is coming out for Garnath. He held off a massive push by B in the early game in the proxy base. And he held off well, but now it's B's turn to hold off. And I'm not so sure. He does have a keep in a town center. There's almost no military. Jean d'Arc does go down. So if she does win the fight, if she does win the game, she might not be alive to see it. As I say that, though, the faction does move back and moves away to regroup. Looks to reset. Maybe to get some siege, right? In this kind of pushes, you kind of always want some siege to take care of the keep. It does give B the opportunity to get the Palisade Walls back up again. And he does have that stronger economy. I mean, the window is still there. But Garnef can't let up on the pressure. Because if he does that, that Jushi's legacy is economy. It's still rocking and rolling. He did good damage. But he felt like it wasn't enough. And hey, could the pendulum swing back in the other way? We'll have to see. Right, it might be a bit of a quiet time in the game, so I'm just going to say that um, I just want to say a very big thank you for everyone who's been supporting the channel, both on YouTube and on Twitch. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. If you're watching on YouTube, maybe consider checking out the Twitch channel because I'm going to start casting most of my games live. And if you're on Twitch and you do maybe like some offline content sometimes, maybe check out the YouTube channel. I do post pretty much every day. In fact, I'm going to be posting maybe two, three videos a day, actually, because I've got a lot of casts uh, done recently. I've been very active couple of months I've been enjoying Age of Empires 4, which I'm sure you guys have been as well with the new DLC. A couple of lances heading there with B, going to get completely complete surrounded and you know, butchered. It is what it is. I mean, B is an awkward spot, right? Like, he's floating a lot of food and gold. And again, I think he uh, he was going to build that Mount Lu Academy. He did get it. He did get it in the end, actually. Okay. So he went for the Yuan Dynasty rather than the Imperial Age. And he's going to lose a couple of uh, villages. He's going to have to rebuild that, of course, because that's actually a lot of population. That's just been knocked off the possibility tally there for B. Going to push in from the southeast now again. Looks like uh, Garneth is pushing again with 74 military. He's getting in that second attempt. Going down the southeast this time. 
And this looks like a bit more of a dangerous push, right? The numbers just look a bit better. And the only thing is it's got to be careful. He's got to do critical damage, right? He can't just keep backing in and backing out and doing bits and bobs here and there. He's got to get critical damage because B's economy is looking pretty decent. Speaking about economy, B's economy is bound to be jumped on because there's a lot of units just riding in. Take a look at Jean. She's got a blast cannon now. It's going to be absolutely ripping through things. 600 HP, 53 hand cannon damage. And we talked about getting siege. I mean, she's practically a siege unit at this point. Plus 200 damage extra on buildings. Going to be ripping through things. It's got to be a bit careful not getting it surrounded by military units. But, I mean, there aren't that many there for B. It's kind of the problem. Yikes. I, I, I do worry for B in this next push because... Whilst he does have a couple of lances picking off the reinforcements, which is all well and good. How does he actually deal with all this? Now, there is one thing going for B is that this is Castle Age units, right? And Garneth is still in the Feudal Age. I feel like, I feel like Garneth is going to go full Feudal Age here. The kind of crazy thing is that Jean d'Arc has a Blast Cannon. And they're in the Feudal Age. He's going to take the fight with the lances. I'm not so sure about this by B. I mean, he doesn't really necessarily have the numbers. There are a couple of spearmen there as well. Tries to get a wrap around, but the archers are nicely protected, cushioned between Jean d'Arc and those lances, and there are a couple of spearmen still alive, but they are starting to dwindle the numbers. I think if the spearmen go down, in fact, actually, this is a good fight here for, for B. The Castle Age tech-up units, they're just so much stronger, and he had enough numbers. A couple of Shaolin monks coming in as well to add to the fight. Now, make no mistake, they're pretty beefy as well. 170 HP, dealing out 16 melee damage, and they're healing themselves up too. Bit of an awkward mechanism in terms of when you compare it to other civilizations. The religious unit for... The Jushi's Legacy actually heal themselves rather than allied units. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, the question is, Garneth, does he feel like he's done a lot of damage? I mean, it feels like his economy is back online again, i got to say. Stayed on the one town centre for now, though. Going to be getting more production buildings, which we, which we like to see. Now, one thing that's good for Garneth is that he probably has consecrated a lot of his production builders, which we'll check in a second, but I say in a second. Bit of a fight here. B cleaning up that army, and all of a sudden, it's B's turn to attack again. Jean d'Arc does have to retreat. She's the only la uh, last standing lady in this little le latest battle. Gonna have to tell her comrades what happened. There's, I don't think there's enough spearmen here for Garneth. I think the Lance has cleaned this up, and B all of a sudden now is the one pushing. Don't forget, he's got the tech up. He's got the Castle Age army. He's got the Castle Age blacksmith upgrades in many ways. I mean, he's got what he needs, right? This is kind of scary for Garneth. Again, a lot of his economy is out and exposed. And he's going to have a lot of idle time here as well. All of a sudden, B's going to dive in on this. He's going to use the Shaolin Monks to try and snipe out as many of the Spearmen as, as he can. Holy Wrath ability comes out for Jean d'Arc. She will clear that up, but... What she might have a bit more difficulty clearing up is this. There's absolute massacre on those villagers. B should be in a good spot to deal with this because, I mean, if he gets breakthrough on those palisades, which probably will happen, that's a lot of exposed villagers. Oh, that's a juicy wood line to have attacked. Oh, does deploy that cannon. So it does get that ability in the end. It's kind of crazy that you can get a cannon in the feudal age, huh? That's the way Jean d'Arc works. Lancers do ride in. They're going to slaughter a lot of the villagers underneath the town centre on the farms. And there's only 41 villagers for gun. I think this could be a killer blow. I'm not sure if there's any way back here. Temple of the Sun coming up for B. I don't think there's a way back. There's just too many idle villagers. The Lancers riding in. I'm not sure if that cannon's going to be enough. And 28 villagers, 16 military. I think B might have done it here. Ladies and gents, the Lancers are going to be diving in on the villagers on that wood line. And this is looking bad for Garneth. All that remains is probably Jean d'Arc as the main military unit. A lot of villagers going down. Holy Wrath ability again, once again. The town centre and the production completely camped on. Any unit that does come out for Garneth is going to be pounced on almost immediately. Jean d'Arc going to maybe just have one last stand. Villagers coming out to engage as well. And Garneth is really going for it. I mean, I think if Jean d'Arc goes down, that will be the end of it. Bombard. The cannon, I should say. It's going to be next, I think. Oh, cannon is being repaired by the villagers. Trying to keep it alive as much as possible. Is dishing out that? I mean, will the Lancers get this? I'm not so sure. Is that being... Oh my god, that's actually being repaired quite severely. Quite severely. All right, well, it does go down in the end. And Jean d'Arc will do go down. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. What a great game on Hidden Valley. 3D Garneth, 3D B. What a spectacle. I mean, it's hard to even summarize. There's so much action. So all that remains to be said is I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, and you're watching on YouTube, give the video a thumbs up. Take care.
and see you next time.